television programme. Uh, but we do it for real, we're not making TV programmes, although we sort of are today, aren't we? But actually, normally we, we would do it for real. Uh, what I thought I'd talk about this afternoon um, is getting investment ready. Um, and why? Well, the reason is that um, quite recently, actually, we had an independent, sort of quite comprehensive survey done of our angel network, our high net worth, to say, what are the issues? How, how do you think Xenos works? Do you know what's it all about? And the key thing that came out of it, uh, the one main conclusion was that, yeah, companies, we're seeing lots of opportunities, and they're sort of great, but uh, they're rarely properly investment ready. So that's what I thought I'd talk about. As a startup company or an early stage company looking for funding, then actually being investment ready is really, really important. So that, that's where this talk uh, originates from. Let's talk about funding a business. Basically, five types of funding to consider. I'm going to go through this slide set fairly quickly. There's quite a lot of slides. Um, but right now, I'd say rather than make loads of notes, because there's a few facts and figures in here, if you take a business card, which is down there at the end, if you want a copy of the slide set, I'll willingly send that to you on email. So just email and, and say, can I have the slide set, please? Okay. Funding a business. Money initially comes from the founders. Um, investors like to see the founders have put something into it at any rate. Um, and then the three Fs. The next stage, you know what three Fs are? Family, friends, and any fool out there will put money into it at that point in time. So that's the three Fs, that's the normal stage of funding. The next money, free money. Getting less and less and less in Wales. Wales used to be really good for free money when I came to Wales 25 years ago now. Um, but you know, if there is free money, if there are grants, certainly go for them. But don't make your business entirely dependent on it. It's a useful source of money if you can get it and get it fairly quickly. Next, soft loans. So soft loans are loans with repayment holidays or very low interest rates. Um, and possibly uh, the Welsh Government scheme repayable business finance, although there's little money in the pot at the moment, but when it, when it is there, uh, that offers quite a good scheme as well because it's a grant that's repayable, but in reality, very few businesses will actually get to the point where they'll repay it, so it effectively becomes a grant. Going on down, debt at commercial rates, so that's going into a bank and, and getting a loan. But equity is something worth considering with funding business, and especially at a very early stage or a startup stage, because this is actually selling a stake in the business. Um, the equity goes in, the money goes in, uh, because the investor wants to make a long-term gain. He's not immediately looking for a, a salary or a quick return. It's going in there, it's risk capital, stays in the business. So equity can be very valuable or very good means of funding a business in the early stages. Okay, this is what I want to consider, I, I, what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to skip that slide because it just wastes time, really. So let's talk about who are business angels. They're high net worth individuals, people um, that, that have got a serious amount of money available, or they're sophisticated investors, people that are familiar with unregulated markets. They're not putting mon money in companies on the London Stock Exchange. They're putting money into businesses uh, that aren't on any kind of exchange where the shares aren't, um, aren't uh, sellable immediately or, or aren't, you, know, you, know, you can't actually uh, uh, work with them. In the UK, uh, who, how many business angels are there? Nobody knows. It's reckoned they're probably about 18,000. It's just a big number. Um, how, about, how much money do they control? Again, nobody really knows. The figure there, 2.5 billion, it might be double that. But if it is, it's still a big number, whatever. So a lot of investors, potentially, and a lot of money under control. And they do finance about 50% of all startups in the UK. Very important in that part of the market. The advantage is they'll consider businesses at any stage, so right from almost at the inventor stage, C-corn, uh, to start up to early stage, through to some quite sophisticated and developed businesses. Uh, so there's something for everybody, really, in terms of an investor network. They take a view which is, well, you know, when, it, when are they going to get their money back? Most companies we see who might stand up and do a Dragon's Den type pitch like this will say, oh yeah, you know, our well, sales are going to go like this, and our profits are going to go like this, and you'll get your money back in three years. The reality is three to seven years, probably actually a five-year return is what they're looking for. If it's longer than seven, not really that interesting. That's too long a time frame. So, you know, businesses logically like some of the technology or drug discovery businesses where it's a lot, a lot of money to go in and many, many years before there's a return and not really 
age or territory, but most businesses are. Um, in Wales, we, as an angel network, do an average deal size of 140k. Uh, we probably haven't done a single deal at 140k. I can tell you the smallest deals we've done have been 10k, um, and the largest in the syndicate about uh, three quarters of a million. We've done a handful of those over the year, three quarters of a million. In fact, the single largest deal that we did was just before Christmas, the largest one ever, and that was one investor, 900,000 from one person in a, in a business. But that actually was secured on property, so there's a bit less risk to that, but you know, it's a large amount of money that somebody's ventured out there. And investors usually take a minority stake, so they're not looking for 80-90% of your business, they're looking for 20 to 45 percent is the usual range, something like that. They're not looking for one percent, like you very often see offered on Dragon's Den. You know, we want 100,000 pounds, and you could have two percent of our business. That, that's not a deal. So they're looking for a reasonable stake in the business, and they look for exceptional returns. And people say, what does that mean? Um, if it's considered a very low risk business, so it's got some sort of traction, uh, perhaps the customer base is proven, you know, there's some early sales, so you can see there actually are customers there. Uh, then doubling their money in three years is okay ish. Um, I, in the past, have worked with a, a technology entrepreneur and they're looking at global breaking, you know, global market, very high risky technology and he wouldn't look at anything unless it was going to be, or predicted to be, at least a 20 times return. We've done a deal very recently, which has been an exit for investors, which was um, a company that had quite a sophisticated system for measuring energy use in commercial buildings. And uh, last year, that was sold to NPower, in actual fact, and the investors got a 10 times return on that one. So it's not bad, you know, someone put in 50,000 pounds and they're getting half a million back especially as that's completely free of tax as well under the government scheme, so that's not, not a bad deal actually. So it gives you an idea of the sort of ranges that can be achieved. Okay, so we're on to, are you investment ready? What do business angels uh, look for? What do any investors really look for? So it's not just business angels, it's to be a bank manager as well. It'd be anybody who's looking to put money into the business in any shape or form. And ones in red are the important ones, um, but the others are there as well. Uh, experienced and credible management team. So yeah, you know, a business plan is important. And business plans can be written, projections can be done. Uh, but investors will ask, what have, you, what have you actually done in your past history? And what have you done particularly that's relevant to your business going forward? They'll look as well to say, okay, what skills have you got? And what other skills do you think you need? So if you're a person, which we do see, saying, I've got a business, it's going to be from nothing to 20 million turnover in three years, and it only needs me, it doesn't need anybody else. Rubbish, you know, it's just not going to work. Particularly, they're looking for financial skills in some shape or form, or financial capability. Because as an investor, if I'm putting money in, I want to make sure there's somebody in the business who's uh, familiar with finances. So we see a lot of businesses where the ideas, are, they're ideas and technically competent, but the weak areas are finance and sales. And actually, you need finance because you've got to control the finances of the business, cash is absolutely vital, and you need sales because if you don't sell anything, you haven't got a business at all because there's nothing in the revenue line. And those are the things that very often are missing and often people don't really appreciate they even need. So it's worth thinking about a management team. So I've got to be there, it hasn't got to be completely there, but it's the recognition that, yeah, you know, I've got skills gaps and maybe Mr. Investor, you could actually help us temporarily in a particular area, but, but it's recognizing that, that those skills are needed. Um, if there's a, a patented technology or very strong customer benefits, USPs, what are USPs? Anybody know? Unique selling points or propositions, unique selling points. It's really the benefits to the customer. If I'm buying your service or product, why would I? What's the benefit to me? So you need to identify those. You might think it's great, but you've got to persuade me if I'm the customer. So those are needed. They need to be identified because that's the reason people uh, spend their money with you as a business rather than someone else. Because there's loads of ways. If I'm a customer, there's loads of ways I can spend my money. It might be with you, it might be with you, sir, it might be, you know, you know, it could be anywhere, couldn't it? And there's always competition. So I can spend my money in lots of different ways. So you have to think about that. 
Um, serious growth potential. You know, investors, banks not so much, but investors are certainly looking for serious growth potential, goes without saying. And these two words are quite key actually there, which is why they're in red. Because we get so many people that will pitch, stand up and say, all my figures are really conservative, or it's really pessimistic because I could do this, I could do that, and I could go to China, and I could go to India, you know. No, uh, business plan's got to be realistic, what you actually can do, uh, and that's a deliverable bit, <coughs> okay? So those, those actually are really important words to use, not be conservative or pessimistic about what can be done, and not be so optimistic about what can be done as well. Key, key things, those. And this, back to this point, what you've actually achieved so far, we've got lots of our investors, it's one of the first questions they ask is, okay, I've seen the plan and that's all well and good, tell me what you've actually done. And it is it's sort of good, good and bad in that because um, you need to have done something in a reasonable scale. So we see people who say, I've been working on this, it's been my life's work for the last 15 years. And you think, my goodness, if they've been working on it for 15 years and they've only got to the point where they've actually just written the business plan or just developed a first prototype, how's, that, how's the business going to go forward? Is it going to take another 50 years to actually get it onto market? So it's great to have worked on it a long time, but actually <coughs> looking at it from an investor's point of view, it's not so great. Things need to have moved along, you know, pretty sharpish, pretty quickly, okay? But, um, investors, angel investors, and particularly those in our network in Wales, where we're looking at Welsh businesses, Welsh companies, um, will often use their skills and their knowledge and their contacts to try and help the business. And that's, for you, seeking investment is a, a key element. They're not only providing the money, they're providing themselves and the contacts and the experience that they've got that can be really, really valuable. And in fact, we get deals where two or three years later on, the company will say, yeah, yeah, I came to Zenos for the money because I needed the money. But actually, the most useful thing was that person who invested and it was physically the person with the mentoring, the skills, the contacts, perhaps that they've got. And the last one is there's two tax relief systems, or a, a tax relief system really under HMRC called um, C Enterprise Investment Scheme, and that's just Enterprise Investment Scheme. And it's very, very beneficial to investors. It gives them income tax relief if they pay tax in the UK. But the most important thing is if, if, they, take, if they invest under this scheme, and they re retain their shares for three years, which with a startup or early stage company most will, they get, they're completely free, any gain they make when the company's sold or whatever, it's completely free of capital gains tax, but they're only capital gains tax as an investor. But it's the company that has to apply for the status in the first place. So first thing we do when we ever see a new contact, a new inquiry, is to say, are you eligible? And there's actually relatively few types of business that, that aren't. Uh, if you are eligible, you should apply to HMRC and get that in process, because it takes quite a few weeks and often our investors won't put the money physically in even if they want to do the deal until that status is confirmed by HMRC so it sort of becomes important from that point of view okay if you go to the HMRC um, business site and just type in SCIS you'll get details or I can provide those to anybody who's interested later anyway not a problem so the red ones are the key ones really and that's investment readiness part of it uh, what we do, just very quickly, we try and help with that. We try and help companies get ready as far as we can. Uh, we're busy people with a huge number of inquiries a year, a lot to <coughs> deal with. We try and recruit investors as well as everything else. So we're busy. Uh, we won't write business plans. Our starting point is you have to have a business plan when you come to us. If you haven't, we'll say, yeah, 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 very interesting, but you know, come back when you've actually got a business plan. So we won't write it. But we will look at it and we will sort of quickly critique it and we'll look for the big black holes that you're going to fall into as soon as you start talking to investors. You know, we'll, we'll try and find where the weak points are. There may not be any, but usually there are. And usually it's associated around that management team and skills and the sales and the routes to market. Those are often the weak, weak parts of plans. Um, we do personal introductions to investors and networking. Um, we, we do email and mail lots of opportunity and we produce bulletins. So this is um, December's bulletin. We produce a thing like this every month, which is an investment journal, basically. And a company starts off by writing for us or with us, because we all have some input as well, a one-page summary, quite a bullish sort of summary of what the business is about with, with an idea of what the deal might be for the investor at the top, amount of money required, what's on offer. 
and that goes into our bulletin, or we can uh, and we can send it out as a, an email alert as well. We can do a computer database search because when you register with us, we'll ask you for some keywords about the business, or we can obviously search our database of investors and uh, get a list of those that might be appropriate. Um, and these days, we do a lot of work syndicating deals because uh, the days of one investor. Uh, putting you know 100k into a business or 200k, 300k is gone. Almost every deal we do is syndicated. It means more than one investor. Even a 50,000 pound deal now is probably going to end up in two or even three investors. Just the way the market has gone in terms of risk because of the recession over the recent years. We do investment events, the investment forums, the Welsh Dragons Den, like exactly like TV program. Uh, audience of investors. You might be the audience of investors between 20 and 40. 40 on a good day. Um, I'm the company doing my 10 minute pitch and you could have half a dozen companies, quite, quite different companies, very different sectors, and make an afternoon of it, start off with a buffet lunch. Nice event, good business event, but very business focused. And you know, if you are working with us, we do quite a lot of work with you if you're going to pitch at one of those events, because we need them to be professional. It doesn't mean you've got to be a great speaker, but it does mean you need to know your stuff and get your facts out and the, s the slides have got to be fit for purpose. So we, we would actually do quite a bit of work with you on that. Okay, um, our database is our value in Xenos. We've been operating 18 years. Um, the investors come and go. It's sort of fair old churn, really, with investors. We've currently got about 120 formally registered investors. So this is not a crowdfunding site or anything like that. These are formally registered investors who pay for the privilege of being Xenos members. Um, and formally sign forms each year to say they've got the money available and it is actually there. Um, Angels come in all shapes and sizes, yeah, you know, some prefer early stage, some prefer some traction, some prefer particular sectors, others are building a portfolio and looking for, you know, one in life sciences, one in you know, software, a film, you, you know, it's very, very varied. And some, they have geographic limitations generally as well. But it works okay for us along the M4 because even Bristol investors can get to just about Swansea in an hour and a half or so. So, you know, it's not too bad. Pembrokeshire becomes a little bit of a problem, but, um, you know, that's, that's it. And Mid Wales becomes a bit of a problem. We have a separate group of investors effectively in North Wales, sort of the living in Liverpool, Chester, Manchester, and kind of North Wales because of the, the, the poor transportation really in Wales between North and South. But a big group down South. Okay, getting investment ready again. What you need, you need to be really prepared. You've got documentation, it's all about documentation initially. We can't get meetings with investors. We get their interest. I can talk to them and get their interest, but I can't do anything unless there's actually documentation. And this is what we say should be a, a standard set of documentation that you should have. So a one-page summary. It doesn't have to be on our ZL template. If you're registering with us, it will be. But, you know, you need a one-pager. That's the thing, really, that you can almost use quickly. You've got to live with Richard Branson. It's the old thing, isn't it? Going up and you want to tell him in a minute what, what you're actually uh, doing. Well, it's sort of a synopsis of this, okay? Well, I've got one minute speed pitch there as well. Executive summary. We say an executive summary is the single most important document, but not usually the rubbishy one that's one page at the beginning of a business plan. And the problem is people write the business plan. It takes so long. It's a big effort. We all know that and then get to write an executive summary, which is obviously it's done at the end, you know, after writing the plan, you can't write a summary till you've written the plan, and then shoved at the beginning as a single page, it's an afterthought, bored by that time, and it's actually pretty useless. So we tend to ask if, if, it's, if it's a longish plan, i.e., and that to us means longer than about 10 pages or 15 pages, we would ask for a separate executive summary of three to four pages. So a really good, strong executive summary. Why? Because the investor can read that. I can sit down and read that. For instance, I'm faced, which I often am, with a 10 megabyte, 150 page business plan. I think, oh Christ, you know, I'm going to really going to work my way through this. So, you know, executive summary is actually a really important document, a good short document, but not the one page afterthought that so often goes in to the main business plan. Then a full year, three year business plan, that is expected, but realistically, it's only going to be year one that's in any detail, and that's going to be half realistic, isn't it? Um, and year one's important, month by month, because for any investor or any lender, any, anybody putting money into the business, they want to know where their money's going to go over the first few months. 
Yeah, years two, and yeah, you know, finger in the, in the air, year three. Don't produce a five-year business plan or a 10-year business plan because it will be totally rubbish after the first 12 months. So, you know, three years to give an idea of possibly the scope and growth that you're looking for. But one year detailed, years two and three, even just as quarterly summaries. Because you bet life after the first year is all going to be different anyway. Probably might not even be doing the same thing that you were doing at the beginning. So, you know, let's get some, get some sense into it. Um, and a key thing in that business plan, as I said before, the, the big area of weakness is often the management team, which is why it's in red. People don't like writing about themselves particularly, or you get very long, full CVs. An investor wants to see who is this person, what's, what's their background briefly, and what is the experience they've got that's relevant to the actual business that they're actually talking about. So it's relevant um, information in the CV, not a whole load of stuff that's interesting, but yeah, and then for pitches, we, we look for companies to produce a 10 minute pitch, which we'll help with, which is about 10 slides. Um, but you should really have one of those, because actually it's quite a nice way of quite quickly presenting, you know, formally presenting to somebody, quite nice to walk into a meeting like ours, or to an investor, or to a bank manager, or whatever. So I've, I've, got, a, I've got a pitch, I can run through it, only 10 minutes. But you need the one minute one as well. You need, you need to be able to say in one minute what you do, what, why it's, Nice, really good idea um, what, you know, what you're looking for in terms of investment. So that is the investment ready document set. And you'll believe the amount of trouble that we have actually trying to get that full set from companies. But, but it is important. So that's my recommendation. Uh, what have we done, just very briefly? Um, our figures, we get about 400 inquiries a year, which is quite a lot, considering we're only three managers, like myself, and one of three. So, you know, if you work that out, it's sort of we're missing a new business opportunity once every two days, probably more than that sometimes. It feels more than that, but, you, but even that's a lot. You know, if we've got a 10 megabyte business plan attached to it as well, it's quite a, quite a workload. But it filters itself down fairly quickly, um, or we filter it down fairly quickly, so looking for opportunities that will be investable. And actually, in a year, we generally put about 70 opportunities in through the network, through these bulletins, 70. Um, and we tend to do about 20 deals. So there's the statistics. It's like 400 inquiries filtered down, or it filters itself very often down to about 70. And we end up doing about 20 deals. So it's not, not a bad success rate, actually, but it's certainly not 100%. But it's good, very good, as angel networks go. So um, I looked at it today, and actually we're 1,112 now, because another company's registered this morning. Well, that, was, that was last night, and I changed the slide. Um, 600 angels recruited. We've got 120 in the network now, so there's quite a churn. Um, over 30 million in 250-odd deals. It's probably a little bit more than that now, since uh, 2001, which is when we formally became a part of Finance Wells. We work with an organization called Finance Wells. And we do about two and a half million investment a year. I think this year will be slightly over. Last year was about that. A couple of years ago, we had, uh, three years ago, we had a really good year at 3.2 million. So it's, it's around about, and that's the money directly out of our investors' pockets into companies. But it obviously leverages quite a bit of other money as well. It can persuade Bosch Government to put a grant in. It can persuade Finance Wells that this might be actually a good idea to match fund or put money in. Uh, and it actually goes down quite well with banks if, if a private, Business Angel is going to put money in out of their back pocket, you know, it's, uh, it, it's actually it's a company credibility. Um, we do other work as well because we're, we're a semi-commercial, we have to wash our face in terms of fees, I'll come to fees in a minute, um, but we've got quite a substantial contract with Swansea University where uh, we go in, I go in actually with one of our angels, technology angels, and we talk to academics and try and work out uh, what they've actually got and whether there's any commercialization possibilities from it, spin out companies or whatever else. That's an interesting thing to do, it takes a bit of time, but it's a good commercial contract for Zenos. So not just about investment. Um, just give over this one. If you write to me, the first thing I'll do is send you a form, which would be something like this, to fill out some basic details, so we don't have to worry about that. What you can expect, um, don't worry about these, so I realise actually quite a lot of these are life science on this side. The interesting bit actually is the, the line over there, just very quickly. These are deals, and it's just a variety of how things go. This one, Equine Health, there were two investors at the beginning, put 25k in each, so that's 50,000 pounds worth of the business. One guy didn't want to put any more money in at all. The other one, 
to put in four funding rounds so far for him himself, 685,000. An angel will stick with the business if it's going well and he likes the opportunity. That's the message there. This one is actually Swansea University to spin in. Um, in there. It's um, medical equipment. We've got a small investor group. It's not just single investors. Most of, most of our network is single investors, but we've got a couple of small groups as well that operate as a group. This was one of those investor groups. 13 funding rounds so far. Each one matched with Finance Wells also putting in money. And that came about because one of the investors in the group uh, had someone in the family who had a medical condition which this novel, very novel technology would, would, would treat or would have treated, would, would treat. So interesting, you know, investors invest for personal reasons as, as well as business reasons. Um, informatics systems, software. 145 from an SEIS fund in London. So we're linked with other people as well. So we're not only our Xenos Angels, we're quite strongly partner with a group of London fund managers who have access to uh, their own funds and they're fundraising all the time and they have access to overseas investors as, as well. This deal, they put money in through one of their funds. We, we introduced the company, 145,000 initially, recently, before Christmas, 200,000 from an overseas investor. This tier one are overseas investors who are looking to work in the UK and get a UK visa. And to do that, they have to put 200,000 pounds investment into a business and take a role in the business. And then they're allowed a visa to come into the UK and work. So 200, and just, um, in January, 300,000 pounds from a corporate investor. So, you know, that's quite a nice lot of money going to that startup. Startup business, I'm sorry, but yeah, that business. In trial, trial mode, but not actually generating any revenues. Medical transcription, not the software one. Again, 200,000 from an overseas investor to the, to the fund managers we're, we've linked ourselves with in, um, in London. And at the other end, loan inventor, uh, 20,000 pound trial by, but put in trial by one investor because he happened to be involved in like the biotech sector and was in, involved in that. So he could actually try it through one of the other companies he had invested in, try the technology. And then we found a second uh, investor who actually develops technology on and then resells it. So that was, that was quite a nice deal as well for someone who was a lone inventor with a, with a science background and this idea. Um, another one showing what universities can do at the bottom, £70,000 uh, through the university, an actual fund that was part, part funded by Welsh Government through the university and that scheme, that's in Swansea as well, that scheme is sort of going on now starting up again this year. But you know, you know, there are some benefits, as was said before, very often of linking up with universities if you've got the type of business that can actually benefit from the types of services. And certainly from my experience, uh, Swansea is very amenable to that kind of approach. Cardiff are as well, probably. I don't people in Cardiff, but certainly there. And this is sort of mm, an ideal deal. It's an interesting one. This is um, taking the big jellyfish, uh, which are around the coast in North Wales. That's the diver. That's the jellyfish. Um, extracting collagen from the jellyfish, uh, pharmaceutical grade collagen, which is obviously used in a number of things. So it started off, startup company, Welsh Government Innovation Grant, got its qualification through HMRC, through Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs for the SEIS scheme, got an investment through Xenos of 150k, which was the maximum. In fact, that, that was through Xenos, but it involved a Xenos angel and one from a Bristol network as well because we've got partnerships with other networks in the UK as well so that, that was quite interesting how that came together co-investment with finance wells they came in stuck 400k 